Welcome everyone to the Cornelia Stephanie show today. I'm so excited to be here because I've got my beautiful co-host Joan Sharp. We're going to be talking about is this the time to talk vision? Do you start your day with vision of how your day is going to go? Do you communicate it with those involved in your day? Today join us for this conversation because how do we talk about our visions and how do we communicate those visions with the people that we're in relationship with? So what exactly is vision and how do you start? What gets in the way and how do you proceed? This is what we're going to talk about today because there's no greater time to share our visions, to share our visions with how we want our experiences to go. And if we don't share our visions, then we're kind of just leaving it out there and are not um, intentional with what it is that we want to create. So for those of you that are just joining in and coming in for the first time, let me introduce you to my co-host, Joan Sharp of River Family Advisors. Joan is not just an advisor, she's a thought leader in the area of changing your money mindset. Joan encourages us to change the difficult conversations that we have that are all about money to a pleasant conversation about a shared vision and that will better support you, your values, your life, your experiences, your legacy and your wealth. Welcome Joan. Good afternoon, Cornelia. It's good to see you. It's so good to see you. I, I know that, my gosh, it's been a month since the last time we've been on and so much has changed. So much has changed. And I want to honor, though, that we're in a very important week for a lot of people. It's Passover. It's Holy Week. And I understand from the Indian tradition with the red moon this week. And then um, there was a Muslim holiday this week, and we're also, they're getting ready to walk into Ramadan in a couple of weeks. This is a really busy month for a lot of people who are staying in place and having to find a new way of being around all of these important holidays. Yes, and that's so great that you're bringing up all the different uh, traditions that people celebrate this Holy Week, this Holy Time, this um, yeah, a very big energy, big time, because yeah. normally we would go out and we would uh, congregate in our communities and our churches and our temples and in places. But now we're being asked to stay in. And oh, yeah. so that is this is this is a really important topic right now. Yes, because we have a vision of what that always has looked like. Yeah. And we're having to recreate what that means and what that looks like for us now this week. Yeah. So what does what does that what does that mean for you? What exactly does that mean for you? How does that how is that playing out for you right now? Oh well, for me because I, and I will say I'm celebrating Holy Week. So um, and I've also been on calls and um, where people have been celebrating Passover. And um, so we have all talking about how we're looking at celebrating this a little differently in um, a together way, but physically distant. And Cornelia, for you, is there uh, a vision of how this week would have gone for you or is it the same? For me, it's pretty much the same. I, I, I do celebrate the Holy Week too. I have a very strong spiritual connection with my uh, guidance, with my higher power, with, with, um, you know, with my belief system, but I would, I would m most likely be spending my, um, my time and my energy outside. Right. And so um, in, in that sense, not, not much has changed for me in that way is because I'm still going to be outside this weekend. Right. And 
I'm, I'm, I'm still doing that. But knowing that everything surrounding me has changed and that there's so many ways that people, um, you know, can't celebrate the way that they've always often celebrated. And right. so I have, I have compassion for that because I know that there's a lot of loss for, for people that are looking for that connection in ways that used to really fulfill them and strengthen them. And now they're having to adjust, right? Well, I'm going to say yes. And we represent a bit of what's going on out there with everyone. Some people have not been affected much by the stay in place. Some people are really overwhelmed. I'm going to say those learning all of a sudden becoming home teachers along with juggling their jobs. And those who would have had other family and everything together. So the visions and the expectations and the doing of what we normally have done has changed. And so here we are having to rewrite a new vision and setting new expectations for this weekend or not, depending where we are. And um, I want to bring up, I know you did a talk about, and you are about how love um, away fear, how to love away fear. And I think this is so important because no matter what tradition you're celebrating this week, it's about love. And um, the importance of maybe understanding how to love away fear because people may be afraid or in fear because of not having those connections this week. I would love to hear an example of how you could love away fear on, in envisioning this. Yeah, that's really good. Well, um, when, when we look at what the truth is, is that love is who we are. That's right. our natural state of being, right? Our natural state of being is love. And if, if we are in fear, like afraid of something, uh, I always like to invite people to look at, um, to make the distinction where are they in consciousness? Because they're either coming from a place of love in consciousness, acting from a place of love or acting from a place of fear. And if we're in fear, we're always coming from the past and we're always coming from something that is where we're perceiving lack of, of something, where we're afraid of something that we don't have. And okay. That it, it's, it's generally, that's what it is. And so I uh, invite people to identify their fears. What, what is it exactly to make it conscious, to make it conscious, to not say I'm afraid and then keep it there, but to actually invite it in and have an experience with it and, um, you know, identify what the fear is so that then you can bring your love to it, that you can bring your acceptance to it. Like for instance, last night I was uh, leading my spiritual meetup group online and one of the women that was there, her fear was that she was going to lose her job. So that was her fear is that she was going to lose her job. And so then those thoughts then build on other thoughts, like what's going to happen, then I'm going to lose my house and then I'm going to this, and then I'm going to this, and then, I, you know, and all these things. So if we can just sit with the, the, the process of uh, looking at the fear that you have around losing your job and what, what, what would happen if you did? lose your job, right? So, what would happen? Right. And, and that is, so this is a time of love within all our religions, wherever we are. So this is a time to sit in fear, um, uh, well, in love and understand our fear and then vision, what is it that's so important to us? So she was, in, she was visioning not so good, but not being grounded in what was important to her in this job in, in being. So it, granted, right now, we have no control over money, right? We are either getting what we're getting, we are getting less than what we got, or, it, and it, it's the same, right? Nobody 
there right now, most people don't have a chance to make more because we are staying in place. Some people may, but I would say very few. So we are where we are, which gives us an opportunity to embrace what we love about where we are and who we are and be able to ground in then for your friend who was worried, who is worried about losing her job is who is she and what does she want to be and why is that job other than money so important to her? What is it that she can now sit and possibly vision what she wants to do and why it's important? Because I'm going to say a lot of people are sitting now and they're realizing what they like about their job, what they don't, and what they um, want to take when they go away. Or some people are ahead and have been staying in safe longer than others and may be there. Others are still near the beginning and just to adjust to it. So what if we start talking about what does that mean to us to move forward? And what does it look like? And what is that vision? But you have to ground it within yourself first, as we do. As we, you stated in the beginning, how many times do we have a vision for what that day is going to be or what our weekend is going to be? And do we ever communicate it? Yeah, I think that's, that's such a key piece is the vision piece and really like uh, the opportunity that happened for this lady where she was triggered that she was going to lose her job. So what, 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 what the gift is in that is that it's bringing up suppressed emotions that had been dormant, suppressed in the physical body of fear that was always there, I'm going to lose my job. And it's just an event occurred and it activated that. And so now she can release those old uh, suppressed emotions and process, release that and, and bring love into that present moment consciously by saying, Again, what's the vision? What is it that I really want now? I'm releasing and letting go of what's no longer serving me. And what is the vision that I want to have for my life? Right? This, right. This is, this. so. Yeah. So how much control has she had actually about her job? Is it so many people had zero control over losing their job? This is the virus. It is not their performance and it is not them. Yeah. And you know, and you, you mentioned this because you honored all the, the different traditions, the religion, uh, the Holy week and all the different ways. Well, one thing that all the religions have in common, and that is living in a state of surrender is being able to surrender to the present moment to what is, and yeah. that is also what love does. Love, right. love knows how to surrender because again, I think in the Buddhist tradition is where they say, uh, you know, people hang on so tight. They hang on so tight that because they're, they're afraid they're going to lose control. And then um, the Buddhists say, um, go ahead and, and let go because you don't have control over it anyway. Right. And here we are. How much control do we have right now? All we have is the control of the space of where we are able to stay and what's going on within us. What a perfect time to talk vision to yourself and then with those close to you. Because what we have control over now is our vision for what we want to see happen and what's important to us. Because we can envision how each day is going to work right now and what we expect to happen. And if you're living with individuals, you actually probably need to share that right now because you may be bouncing children around while you're on different calls. Right. You have to coordinate who's on what call when because the voices overlapping. So this is the time that you actually may be communicating some vision that you hadn't and, and planning together that is starting to happen. So now, are you talking about and thinking about, and you need to do it individually if you're with someone and then come together 
because you both are individuals, even and you are a together, you're both. And the way it's successful is if you honor individually who each one of you are. So if you think about this and start this is where and what is important to get make progress on in three years, think about that. And then why is that important? And what are our obstacles? And think about that now, because I know in my mind, I think I'm going to walk out of this stay and safe and everything's going to be the same, even though I know it's not. Okay. But what I, and I know it's not, but I can tell you, I still feel like I'll walk back into these things. Some things won't be there. Some people will have decided that, you know, it's just not working. There isn't the energy anymore. Some things will be the same. What I have worked on is the things that I know are really important to make my day and me work better in what I do. And I'm fortunate that I've been able to work virtually with those things in my life that they have continued. And then the services of the individuals that I get my hair cut, pedicure, clean my house, those people who support me and keep me going, who I no longer can use right now, I'm paying as if I had my appointment because I want them to be there when I get back. And I suggest if that's true for others, if you have the income to think about that. But if during this vision, you realize that there was something years ago, I had something that I found I wasn't getting satisfaction from, and I knew I needed to change. If you find that with something, then spend the time to figure out why that doesn't work anymore. And what does that mean moving forward? And what are you going to do? If we start planning and talking about this now, and if you share with someone and both of you have gone, go through this process individually, then come together and talk without judgment. Just listen to each other. So then you have a plan as you walk out of this. A vision is really what you have and expectations. So that as some of those things, you may find out the person who you get your haircut from decided they want to retire. They enjoyed the staying in place mm-hmm. and went to parks and hiked and communicated with family or because of this have decided they, they're moving cross country to be closer to their family or to another country. We don't know what's going to happen. And then you can come home and share with that person, wow, okay, that has changed. This has thrown me off. How do I work through this? Because you know, this is why I like this person. How do we find someone else? And I have to say, being a woman, losing a hairdresser can create a lot of fear in a woman's life. (laughs) No kidding. Uh, And I'm going to let you address how you love away that fear. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting because, you know, um, that is the first thing that we think about too. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, what am I going to do? But you know, my hairdresser, one of the things, and I just have, I cannot wait to share with her what you said. This is such a beautiful uh, gift that um, you're offering to your people that take care of you, that you're paying as if they were already still continuing. It's a really beautiful thing because uh, one of the things that I've been saying is that people that have the money, people that have the support, people that have the resources to now share and give to the people that don't have it simply because it's just what, what love does. It's just what love does. One of the beautiful things my hairdresser is doing is she's doing a virtual salon. And what she's done is she's gone to you know her salon and she's gotten the color and everything for her clients. And she has mailed to them like a little bag and she's made videos for them. And so now they have videos, they have the little bag and they have 
um, their, you know, maybe their spouse or somebody, maybe their children can help with the hair coloring or whatever. But she's been doing that creatively, putting videos on YouTube and um, doing things that way where she can still stay active with her clients now. And, you know, maybe showing how to do a little trim with curly hair or whatever, you know, um, but very genius and creative ways on how she can stay involved in her client's life right now. So that is a yeah. beautiful, yeah. It is, and I will say my hairdresser is doing um, the color part for people and saying, call us, we know your color mixed, we'll mix it for you and there is a YouTube video. But Cornelia, I appreciate you think, saying that that was love, but it also is one way I feel I can support my economy mm -hmm. moving forward because our economies are, are, to some extent, there are things we control. And, and spending it in our communities versus staying home and not spending. I know I talked to someone who said, oh my gosh, my cash flow is great. I'm saving money. And I'm like, cause I'm not doing these things. And I said, do you want those individuals there when you get back? If you do, you need to continue to have them yeah. in the budget. And this is part of visioning. If you have that vision, right. And, and I love hearing what your hairdresser is doing. And that's, and there are a lot of people who are, um, gym personal trainers, um, and various other people who are reaching out and doing things to be involved in their clients' lives. I belong to Rotary, and our Rotary Club is now doing virtual Rotary. We meet Thursdays at lunch, and last week was our first one, and we had over 60 people attend, and this week we had over 110 people attend. And part of what's beautiful about that is Rotary is a part of our community, and our Rotary is showing we are going to be here standing to help bring our community back because that is Rotary is business and giving in the, um, within communities. So that's why, I stand, you know, now that maybe people are taking a breath on where they are, envision what is important to you, what do you want to make progress on, and then reach out and see if those are really there, if they're there now, participate, support. And if you already see it's not working, maybe start looking at who is there, what is there to participate and support. So that as you're able, as we're able to have physical closeness again versus physical distance, we start having those conversations. And then you have worked on what your vision is, and then you can start figuring out with the person you talk to, how much do you want to spend on that? And you can also be focused on, you know, that was not satisfying us. Really, we were just doing. It wasn't how we were being. And this is a time to really allow ourselves to be. And these holy weeks that all these religions are having now are actually about all of us grounding and being and not doing. And you can look at it as a gift, but we actually have a gift right now to stop and breathe, to be in the present and to let go and have of the control we thought we may have had. And then we can start moving forward with our vision and what is the value of each thing for us. You know, I have to, I have to say something about what you said, and that is the value of our being. And this is really a key important piece because people right now are being invited to not produce be productive in that sense, go, you know, with, with the way that we have before. And, and when we look at the value of being the value of the feminine energy of being that there is so much value in that, in that stillness, in that holiness, in that peace, in that allowance, in that presence where healing can happen and where 
um, you know, where you're asking questions in that space to to just be and not do. And our 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 humanity, our society has been so out of balance of mm-hmm. not having enough beingness in in balance with the doing. And yeah, I'm 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 all for taking action. I'm absolutely for it. But I also know that right now many people are feeling a low self-worth, a low feeling, low esteem, self-esteem because they're not producing. And that's only because they haven't brought into balance their inner beingness and, and haven't explored that. And so there is, there is a space and a time for this now to really look at the value. What's the vision behind the value of being? Right. And I'm going to say there are some people really busy with children and may not feel you have the space, but are you having dinner together now? Are you sitting down and having dinner? And this is where you can have this space together for those conversations. Yes. Yes. It's, this is, this is turning out to be such a great show because, you know, um, again, you should, you know, cause you mentioned dinner and taking um, the conversation of vision to the dinner table, even talking to the whole family and saying, what's your vision for this? Having an open discussion around visioning. What's your vision for tomorrow? What's your vision for when, we, when we're when we going back out? What's your vision in this family? What's your vision? I mean, you know, what about the, 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 the um, gosh, what's the word? The kids that are seniors in high school and that are not, the schools are closed and they are missing out and this whole, you know, there's so many things that we, that people are experiencing right now. And the theme I, I feel like is loss. It's, it's loss, like just loss in so many areas, loss is being faced and loss is having to be dealt with. And how do we deal with loss? With love, with surrender, with acceptance, with prayer, with grieving. Grieving is a big part of being human. And that's, that's the thing is don't be afraid to grieve. Don't be afraid to dive in and really allow yourself to heal and cry and grieve and be sad. You know, the key is not to stay there, but allow yourself to move through the, yeah. the different stages of grief. Yes. Yeah, it is. It is. And it's great that you brought up grieving because I think that's part of this busyness too, of trying to keep everything the same. The first couple of weeks, a lot of us were in, I know I had a lot of stuff, of stuff planned and almost all that was able to be virtual that I can tell you, I was so overwhelmed and exhausted. And I saw a thing uh, today, an article on zoom fatigue. (laughs) (laughs) And I thought, Oh my God, that's what I had, right? (laughs) So, because it really, you know, it takes a little bit more and a lot more focus because we're working on feeling the energy, right, through Zoom. And um, so you need to honor that and not bring that to the dinner table. And even if you're alone, you need to be able to figure out someone to talk to. And if you're in a place, I'm fortunate I'm in a place that currently, and I say currently, allows our state parks to be open so I can have a physically distant walk with a friend and make sure we pass people physically distant so we have fresh air and can have a conversation on where we are and what's going on and what do we see when we um, leave this space. And I would like to say the media is going to say we're a disaster and we're collapsed. But I would like to say we are going to be stronger because we've all been able to regroup on what is our purpose. We have worked so hard, maybe, not everybody, but we don't know what, we haven't been able to focus on what our purpose is, which is part of our vision too, is knowing your purpose. And You know, you may not know it exactly, but if you start with a vision of each day, a month, a year, what do you envision your life to be and share it and start figuring out that purpose. And I'm going to mention Simon Sinek's why, 
he started a book club for people to read. He's reading the why and he is answering, asking questions. And one of the things he said is everybody has a why, which is the same as we all have a purpose. This is the time to honor our why and purpose. And no, and then start figuring our vision from there and what's important. It won't be perfect, right? We stumble, we try, but it's from what we try, where we think we should go, and the process we set up that we then can stop, breathe, and say, okay, I learned from that, and I like that. Now, where am I supposed to go? Because that's not quite right. But this is what's important about having a vision is then you have something you're working for. And if you communicate it, because that's where your expectations are with the people around you, they support you, you have conversation around it. And when you're married and together, having a vision, actually both of you individually to honor each one of you as an individual, and then the togetherness of the family helps you communicate with your children while you make decisions. And also to be focused and then feeling more control in your cash flow. And I would like to say, Cornelia, you know, I like to say estate documents, getting those done. Like if you start having, why is that important? And attorneys are working. If you guys haven't done them, you know, sit down and talk about who do you want to take care of your children? What, what does it mean? Or how do you want to leave things to your children? Or what is the purpose of in your vision and your family story that you want to make sure comes through in all this. This is the time. And as you said, sitting at dinner, talking to the kids about it, asking them. And believe me, if they're teenagers, you're not going to get much. I understand that. But sometimes they throw out those little bits that are um, really nice. Yeah. I, I think these are, you know, powerful conversations to have with your children, with your spouse, with your partner, is looking at the legacy, you know, the estate, whether that's um, even if one partner was to lose their life, if both, you know, just everything, all, all these things need to be talked about. And, and because it's, it's about your, um, your vision, it's about your decision, you know, and um, being able to share and communicate that with your loved ones. And right now it's, it's like, you know, there's this universal pause, a world pause that where everybody is invited to be intimate with each other. The, the people that live in their households with each other. And like now we get to talk to each other and spend time with each other and find out what our values are, what our visions are, what our whys are, because maybe it's changed and maybe I haven't looked at it in a long time and now would be the time. What about our finances and how do we incorporate our finances now? How do we do that? Right, Joan? Isn't that ah. the conversations to have? Yeah, but it is starting from the vision. Okay. And now, yeah, and then, so what is the value of each one of these? And I'm going to say, and I've heard this from more than one person, that people being so close together right now mm -hmm. and to really be with each other and get to know each other, some marriages are not making it. And it's who each one is. And what's important is actually who you are when you show up, not what you have and not all the doing and busyness that has covered over that. So even though we are in the turmoil right now, the rocky roads, and you know, as I would like to say with my sculpture, we're all moving a lot. And the anticipation is when we come out of this, it stops. But actually, it's going to be rocky again. So if we start these conversations now and start doing this, when we come out of this, it won't be so rocky. So this is really where everyone has a chance because nobody knows if they are going to get the virus because you don't know if you walked by someone who sneezed who had it, right? You don't know, and you don't know every day if you go to the store or if you're going to come in contact. So this is really the time to ask the question, 
two, what did I miss doing? Who did I miss being? And maybe those are the questions you ask. Or if I only had a year to live, what would I do and who would I be? That may be the way to start the vision. And once again, if you're a couple, each one of you answer it separately and then come together and no judgment and ask your kids, have fun with it, with your kids, maybe asking them some questions. So then you can start defining a family vision. So when we go back out, and someone comes, one of the kids come back and say, oh, so-and-so got this because of the stay in place. You can say, well, how does that work with our family vision? So now it's not about the money. It's about a family core vision and expectation. And that's also embracing love within the family. Because aren't you sharing love? If you're talking about a vision together, and then you also open up communication on expectations. And if someone is resistance, it allows the conversation of what fear is there. And they can talk about that in love, right? Absolutely. I mean, love, it, it's such a key um awareness to bring in consciousness that this this is about love this is because that's what we're what what we want to leave our legacy in that's what we're building our foundation on it's everything is about love it's about peace it's about honoring it's about respect it's about uh, desire it's about what our why is and it's about having those intimate conversations it's about um, joy and prosperity those are, those are the things that we want to build on. In the old world, before, um, it was very divided, very separate, very, um, you know, we, we were doing things because of whatever, because we should and all these things. But now we have really this time to really answer those questions, the visioning, the why, the purpose, and uh, be more intentional with each other, be more intimate with each other, be more engaged with each other instead of, you know, being so right. separate. And love, love is at the core of all of it. Yeah, and then that's how we are gonna be grounded in how we spend our money. We will be able to get our estate documents done if they're not done or updated, which should be updated every three to five years if there is no other transition in life. And then, we can think about this and where we want to give charitably and how do we want to start a business? And if you want to start a business or start something different, now you can start looking at online classes because I think we're still here for a couple more months. When I look at China it was in for three months. Well, you know, we, some of, some of you are a month out, some are not, you know, but we're in for a little bit. And so this is an opportunity to take a breath and a break and make those boundaries that fit your vision because by allowing all of work to take over now, I was joking, it's like I used to go have meetings maybe virtually, go have lunch with someone, a lunch meeting, get out, come back and, and work and do stuff. Now I feel like I'm in a Zoom meeting, I get a restroom break, a Zoom meeting and a restroom break. But we have to get back to setting our boundaries around this and what does this look like? And, and so maybe this is the time if you wanted to go back to school to look at some online education and there is definitely online education out there right now. And what does that look like? And start balancing that what is important to you and, and getting the support if you're with someone of the partner you're with. Um, but what's really I'm going to point out is important is honoring your purpose or you may call your why and why you do things and also those around you. And let's start communicating that. Imagine that if we start communicating why things are important and what your purpose is 
and why you're making decisions. So we don't have to say, oh, I can't afford to do that. It's more, well, I think that is really a great thing, but, but, and you don't even have to say, but you can say that is really a great thing to do. My vision is to do X. And, and as much as I would love to do this, it will take away from my ability to do that. And let's start having those conversations now. Yeah, I love that. I love that so much. You know, I hope that the audience is really feeling inspired today with this vision conversation, the vision, the purpose, the why, and also getting the documents in order, talking to your children about um, their visions, your vision, and combining those and really looking at what's important to you. Let's take a break, Joan. We totally skipped break one and break two, but okay. I've got to honor some breaks here. So let's okay. take a break. And when we come back, we're going to give the audience a couple other nuggets that they can tap into, and we'll be right back. We are talking about vision, we're talking about purpose, we're talking about changing our conversation from money to vision, and how to make sure that we're making good use of this time right now in these challenging times. Joan, uh, you know, we were talking about community during the break. What do you want to offer to the audience now to focus on uh, for this during this time period? Well, I would like, I had my conversation group uh, starts at the, the end of April. If you're interested, please go to www.riverfamilyadvisors.com. And it's under the tab, cha changing your conversation. And it's the conversation group. If you're interested in starting to have support around that, I help facilitate the conversation from where you are and helping to have the conversation start. And that's $1,500 a quarter for that. And there is a free webinar before to help get you started and um, your mind wrapped around it. And so that we can move into this now from our vision and not money. This is a time that we are able to start changing that conversation because we are living where we are right now with the resources we have. And so, is, and it's not gonna be able to change abruptly once the economy opens. So why don't you take control of your vision? And if you would like to have support and facilitation, please go to my website, www.riverfamilyadvisors, and advisors is A-D-V-I-S, ORS.com. And Cornelia, you are working on conversations yourself too. What would you like to share? Well, I, I have been offering uh, support for people to uh, have a space to transcend their fear and how love loves away the fear. And whatever fear it is, whether it's fear in business, whether it's fear in your personal life, whatever the fears are, whatever the fears are that are up on, in the surf, on the surface now. And so I'm going to be offering a series of webinars coming up in um, the beginning of May. And so for those of you that are listening now and that are resonating with what it is that I'm talking about here, and you, you really want to take uh, charge of your energy, because that's the thing, is taking charge of your energy and using your love uh, frequency to create what it is that you want to create. That's really what it is, is not creating based out of fear, but creating based out of love. And you can sign up for my newsletter very simply by texting the number 228-28-228 to Cornelia, K-O-R-N-E-L-I-A. And then you're signed up for my newsletter. And then when I start rolling those webinars out, then you, you are um, included to register and sign up for them because 
every time that we come together as a group and we transcend fear together, it's, it makes everybody stronger because a lot of us share the same kind of fears, you know, we, we have, we share our, our humanity and we're facing a lot of these things together. And so that's how we can support each other as a community in love. Right. And this is also what gets in the way of sharing our vision. We're afraid people won't agree with us or think we're able to do it. And so the two do coincide. And this is our opportunity to walk through those fears and embrace them with love and verbalize our vision, which is our expectations with those around us. So either you know they won't support you or they will support you, but you know your purpose and your why and what you is important to you. So this is the opportunity for us to take a breath when we can and think about this. And by the way, if you had a vacation on your schedule during this time, don't cancel it. What was your vision for your vacation? Figure out how to have that experience with what we have now. Be creative. We have a wonderful opportunity to be creative right now. And that also helps your vision get started. And it increases the feeling of love. Absolutely. And, you know, everything starts energetically first. It starts there. So even if you're setting the intention that once this virus, once this quarantine is over, my new home is going to be such and such and such. In my new home, I'm going to have a pool or I'm going to do this or I'm going to have that once. What about you? Um, just that even would be a great vision conversation with your partner or your uh, friends. You know, this is, this is a great thing to do is ask each other, what are you going to do? What's important to you when this is over? How do you see yourself? How do you vision yourself? And, and start with the energy first, right? And know that every time when you're acting out of love, you're acting in your integrity. When you're coming from fear, you're acting from lack and uh, paralyzation of the past, of the old, that is not in support of your truth, right? Right. So I am, I love the fact that you said a house with a pool. So then I would ask why a pool? Why is it important? And maybe if you start looking, there are not houses that you can get with a pool that you can afford, right? But why was that a pool important? So how can you, what else can you do to satisfy what that pool was going to mean? Because there is something else out there that might satisfy it because the pool is an object. Yeah. It, it may help you, you think, but um, think about that. We, I don't, I know several pool owners and I just say this, they find it's more work than what they thought. (laughs) And and, and I just say that as, you know, um, when you think of a thing, why that thing? And, and don't get me wrong. I love swimming laps. No, you know what? This is my, this isn't mine. I heard somebody say that. I heard somebody say that. Paul, when, when this is over, I'm going to get a house with a pool, you know, so this I heard somebody else say that, but it's great to ask your why. Ask your why for everything because that's your why is the reason why you're getting out of bed in the morning. It's your motivation. It's the thing that fuels you. And it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful um, question to ask. Why? What's your agenda behind it, right? Yeah. And I was literally talking to someone who was, who's a painter and um, explaining this vision and stuff. And he said, oh my gosh. So you mean... When my wife and I got married and decided we were going to have kids, and he's like, she's the one with a college degree. And she looked at me and said, I want to stay home and raise our kids because that's what's important to me. So we're going to have to have a smaller house. Oh. He And they did. Because being hands-on with her children was the highest priority for her, not where she lived. And so that was a vision they did and created and their daughters, they had daughters that are just thriving and, um, and they are very happy, loving couple. She runs the books and the appointment side of the business, you know? And so I say that, that, that it's really gotta be not about the stuff. It's about you and the being 
on the vision yeah. evolving from there. Yeah, love that. I love that so much. I love that story. So we are wrapping it up now during this uh, very holy week that we're in. Thank you, Joan Sharp, for coming on and ha- helping us change our conversation from money to vision and keep bringing that vision to us. And for the audience, thank you so much for listening and tuning in. And take us up, contact Joan, contact me, and take us up on our wonderful offerings to support you in creating a legacy that you can be proud of. And join us again next month when Joan will be back and we'll continue our conversation and, you know, share with us what your questions are next time. And we'll be happy to answer those for you. In the meantime, have a wonderful Easter weekend. And, and Passover. And, and, and Passover. And yeah. Take care, everybody. Yeah. Bye. Bye.